prepare Yuki for this next really big, probably bad idea adventure. And the first thing we're going to do is replace the control arms, just the front upper and lower ones. These are about like $140 for them. And I figured if I do it myself, I save a bunch of money. Whenever I was on the road before, they wanted to charge me over $1,000 to replace the control arms. So this will give me some lessons in doing that and also save hopefully money. I'm gonna fix the door right now. Oh, easy fix. Yuki has a lot of dings. It's a really lightweight. I just, just cut myself some hair. Right here is the control arm, one of the control arms. And there's definitely some play. It looks like there's a little bit of play. This should, shouldn't be too hard because we have a lift. It would be a lot harder if we didn't. Those bolts might come off a little easier than these ones. You know, that's usually the hardest part, I think, is getting like rusted bolts off and stuff. So it's just so oily and gross and dirty, but very oily. But this side is not because the oil leak is on. If we can get this done, this whole job, would have cost us $134 you know, versus thousands out of a candy shop. was kind of difficult to do. We could only get on three of the bars. Um, and also it didn't come with the two upper bushings. So those are the ones that need replaced the most. So I think I'm gonna have to, I ordered the bushings, but I'm gonna have to have someone else do it because we don't have the proper tools. But at least we got three of the bars on with the control arms. And I know how to replace control arms. Now I have to get an alignment and also have to get it inspected too. It has not been easy to get Yuki around to leave. Actually, it's been a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. Look at this. This is a lot of ducks. I was complaining in my Instagram stories that I never get any ducks because in Jeep culture, Wrangler culture specifically, you give each other ducks and you see cool Jeeps, but no one's ever given me one. So I was kind of complaining in my Instagram story when my friends sent me like a hundred ducks. We need to go through these and pick a couple out because I can't take all of these. But like, that was funny. <laughs> I have a couple other things that I got for Yuki to prepare for this new adventure. Oh, <laughs> I'm driving across all of America again in my 270,000 mile Jeep Cherokee XJ. Terrible, terrible idea. Preparations that I have done so far, it's I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm just gonna replace the control arms myself with my dad. I think specifically on the topic of doing solo Jeep life, well, a solo woman, is there's a lot more things that you consider and I don't know how big of a following I have of women, but I do want to specifically talk about it because if I do inspire anyone to do these types of things, I want to also give a perspective of, you know, what it's like and what you can expect because I've done it quite a bit now of taking vehicles out and going out on my own in different countries or places that I've never been before and just relying on my faith in the vehicle and that everything will be okay. <laughs> Last year at this time, I did the same thing and drove all the way out west. It was so much anxiety mixed into so much happiness and curiosity and exploring. So I can't say that it was a stupid idea because I wouldn't be doing it again if I truly thought that. I cannot buy another vehicle. So if I am to do this, I just have to use what I have and that is my very high mileage Jeep. So I'm just going to. I'm gonna pack all my belongings into it and go off into the unknown again. I'm gonna take a different route this time. Last time I took the northern route. This time I'm gonna go more southern just so it's a little bit warmer. It's a long drive. It's a lot of miles. Having to go to mechanics as a woman is the bane of my existence. I can't explain it. I mean, it's not even that I've had terrible experiences with mechanics. I know I've been ripped off. I know that for sure. But they've never treated me too badly, not directly to my face anyways. It is still so much anxiety because Obviously mechanic world is a man's world 
still. But it's still very intimidating to have such an, I wouldn't say unreliable vehicle, but I'm saying that in this way because it's not a reliable vehicle. It's very old, very high mileage, and you just never know. You never know for any vehicle. The amount of mechanics that I have been to across the states, I've been to a lot of mechanics, okay? So it's something that I loathe, I dread. For the past few days, I've been trying to call mechanics and they're all booked up, of course, and no one can get me in and I need to leave because I am on a time crunch in a week. I even called my cousin who is also a mechanic and he's all booked up. So it's just like, I also don't want to spend a bunch of money. So I'm calling people that I know or that I have connections to which is probably you know why it's a little bit harder because I spent all my money in England, did take it into a mechanic and they couldn't get me in, but he said that it would not pass inspection with the front tire. The front tire is completely like bald. Just one of them though. They're, I have all different tires. So I took it to a tire place and they wanted to charge a hundred and some dollars and then $20 to put it on. And they didn't have availability until a few days later. And I'm just, I am, am, I'm impatient, so. I'm just like, mm, that's a lot. I don't need a new, brand new tire. Look at my other tires. They're like, it wouldn't, it wouldn't match. So I drove all the way out to a used tire place and they caught me in right away. $40 for the tire and the installation. And I even paid a $5 tip because I'm so pleased. Also $5 to discard of my other tires. That's, that's what I want. That's the type of what I'm talking about. I wanted to show you something that I was really excited about getting and I'm gonna put it into you case. I'm upgrading my water system because the other one that I had, and I'll show you, it just wasn't, it didn't work properly for me. And whenever you live in such a small space, you need to have things that function very well and also sometimes have multiple functions. So this bad boy, I'm gonna go put it in the key right now, but first filled up with water. It is a three gallon, 12 liter water tank. And then it has this thing, which is securely on water pump. So it's basically just, a portable spigot. Also, I found these in my mom's laundry place and I've never really seen these before, but they're, they're laundry sheets, which if you're traveling around a lot, it's hard to carry laundry liquid with you or even pods because they melt in the sun. So having sheets like this, it's very portable or when you're traveling abroad or any type of traveling. So, and they're also good for the planet, apparently. They just look like this. You put them into your laundry. Space saver. So this also comes with a little thing to clean it. And then it also comes with a different um, tap option. This was my old water situation. Um, I think this is three gallons as well. And I, and I got a separate attachment to put the little pump on top of this. The problem with that is that it was just wobbly. It wasn't secure at all in any way. And this is a very weird shape to try and put in. Replacing it with this bad boy, which is just a nice little upgrade. Let's see what we can do here. I haven't actually figured this out. So I have a little space in here. And this space here is also for my solar battery to be put in. So I need to kind of manage both of those. I mean, it's kind of a trickle. I think the tubing might be bent or something. Well, as you guys know, I, I have this. This also has a pump and pulls water, it, but it's a shower and I have a collapsible bucket. So that's the whole bathroom and kitchen combo. My whole plumbing situation. I got my bushings and these were like $11. And I know that when garages get parts for you, they always overcharge for getting the parts. So I wanted to get my own. These are the culprits. These are what I need in. And um, just having a hard time with that. Once I get it inspected and get these bushings replaced, everything's pretty much ready to go. I just need to pack up again. And to be honest, I am quite terrified. Probably even more so this time around. So this is the size of my battery. Let's plug it in and see if we're getting any electricity. 21 watts. That's what I'm talking about, baby. 22, 23. Oh, that makes me so happy. 29 watts. Like I was doubting this solar idea, but like we're getting in some water. It's even cloudy out right now. Well, as you can see up here, some of the rust from this is falling onto it. We're still getting in some very nice sun. While I'm driving, it can be charging. It can be charging at all times. This fits really nicely right here. So I just open the door and have water capabilities. And then I put the battery back here. We have power, we have water, shoe holder. We're gonna sort through these little duckies. Well, I'm anxiously waiting to hear back if Yuki's gonna pass inspection. I just took her to a garage for inspection because I haven't been able to get into her mechanic yet or find one that will take me in. But 
The control arm bushing shouldn't affect it getting passing inspection. We'll sort through these rubber ducts in the meantime. <laughs> so many rubber ducts. Let's see what the best ones are for Yuki. Like this brown duck, it's kind of just simple and plain. I, I think we should go with this dinosaur duck for sure. Oh, we have to take the monkey duck. This is like a colonial duck. <laughs> I don't know, like all this stuff is, it's, it's very stressful on me. Just the mechanical issues of things. It just feels like so much work just having a vehicle. I had to renew my registration again. And it's just like, what is registration even for? You're already paying all these other fees. Why? Why? I have to upgrade my AAA. I have to pay my insurance every month. Um, I have to get pay for the inspection and the emissions. And obviously you have to pay the taxes when you, you get it. And then I have to pay for the repairs, which are a lot. So it's, I poured so much money into this vehicle and it has given me freedom, of course. It feels like I'm just kind of not getting anywhere. Like people buy houses and land and stuff like this. All I can afford is just this Jeep. I feel not secure at all. It's not that I don't want to do these adventures because I do for sure, but not having anywhere to like, feel like I can rest or feel like I'm not always, like something's always coming to get me, you know, like some sort of form I need to do or some sort of bill I need to pay or some sort of thing I need to, you know, I always feel like I'm in trouble. You know, I think we can all relate, male, female, young, old, whatever, that things nowadays are much harder and almost depressing. Like you can't make it. Of course, I'm always venting and things will always go how they're going to go. I think we need this guy. I will update you on whether she passes inspection or not. Did she pass or did she fail? <laughs> she passed. She passed with no issues at all. Ha! This is the little wins that we need to have faith and confidence that we're gonna be able to get out west. Now all we need to do is get these bushings fixed. <sighs> that makes me happy every time. I just took Yuki into another mechanic to get an opinion on uh, the bushings and he said that it should be fine. So the bushings shouldn't really be an issue. Now all I need to do is get it aligned. So I'm very happy about that. Just to have that peace of mind is everything. That's like, like that's to me, that's the main thing. Cause I stress out a lot about a lot of things because like, like I've said in this video a lot, I just want to be on the safe side, safe side. So I do get anxious about a lot of things. Um, but that gave me a lot of peace of mind. So yeah, I just need some alignment now and then I can leave. And he said, he said that it was in really good condition. It drives really well for the, how many miles it has. So he had, a, he seemed to have a lot of faith in it. And I'm just like, that again, it just means so much to me. Put my duckies in the window. Get my ducks in a row, you know? Put my ducks in. <laughs> you go see people have to give me ducks now that they see all these and look at those fresh inspection stickers those are nice nice and new all right so look at those ducks they're not going anywhere it's just it's given me a, a confidence boost that she passed inspection because that at least means in basic terms she's still safe to drive. The main concern is that it's gonna it's beautiful out today it feels like springtime it's almost like 60 degrees and it's all oh, the sun. I love it and I cannot wait to go out west and have the sun because I want to avoid any snowstorms that are possible because whenever I do leave it's going to get cold again and I do not want to drive a bunch through ice and snow. That's my main concern and also staying warm at night is also something to think about but I have a solution for that. Because I have my battery, I'm pretty sure I've showed you guys but I have a, a heated blanket that I can plug right into my battery and if my solar power works it can charge the battery while I'm driving and then whenever I sleep at rest stops which is my plan I can plug my heated blanket in use that for the night wake up have the battery charge again so those are my two main concerns for the cold weather that'll be coming because I know it's gonna be really cold at night another concern is because I put on the Jurassic decals that I might be a little less stealthy sleeping at rest stops is it feels safe to me thinking about it right now it doesn't but whenever I'm in the moment it feels fine because there's a lot of people going in and out. There's also usually like call boxes at rest stops if you're in trouble. I actually feel safer there than I do staying at 
shady motels. Motel, the only motels I'd be able to afford at all would be really shady ones. So it is something to consider. The video is kind of about my experience as a solo female. I don't know what a male experience would be like, but from my experience, it doesn't feel too unsafe. Of course, my other concern is that she'll make it, you know, even if the suspension and everything is good, like you never know when the engine's gonna go out or the transmission. So th those are my two main concerns. And I'm gonna, you know, document the whole process because you know how lonely I get whenever I'm out by myself. So I like to talk to you guys. I'll see you out on the road, hopefully the next video. Oh, say extra trust her. Goodbye. <laughs>